Hey, so I first did my first talk about CSS Grid all the way back in 2016. At the time, it was actually only available in Firefox Nightly and Chrome Canary. So I was making things that no people could actually see just to try things out. I was actually using a whole bunch of brand new CSS features, bleeding edge stuff. Um, just experimenting, making sometimes more like abstract, weird experimental layouts rather than real websites. And it was fun, but um, it's not something you can do at work. Um, so now, of course, CSS Grid is supported everywhere except Internet Explorer. So. <laughs> It's a little frustrating, definitely. Around the same time that I was playing with all these brand new CSS features, I was reading this book by Aaron Gustafsson. Um, so it's, it's basically all about progressive enhancement. This is the idea that you can start off with semantic HTML, and you can sort of slowly build in layers. And once you've got that base of solid semantic HTML, you just add on some CSS, you sprinkle on some JavaScript, and then you've got a website that every single person can use. Um, back then, I think his example was border radius, right? So at the time this was, that the book came out, this wasn't very widely supported. Now, if you're on Opera Mini, even now, this still isn't supported, but you can use it pretty much everywhere else. And if it if you're on one of those very old browsers, if you're stuck on perhaps IE4, I mean, at, on nature.com, we still have, I think, 400 users on IE4, about 500 on IE5. So these people are still out there somewhere. I, I don't know what they're doing with their life. but uh, So it, these people will see a square, and it's like, OK, that's fine. Let's take a far more modern example. This is me on, this is my personal website on Google Chrome. This is my personal website on Firefox. In a couple of time, this will be my personal website on Firefox. So there is a whole bunch of stuff we can use without really worrying about it, without caring about it, without thinking about it. If it doesn't work, it really doesn't matter. Our website is still fine. And then, of course, we have layout stuff, which is less fine. So I'm going to have to wait until every single browser in the whole world is actually supporting this stuff before we feel we can actually use it on a production site. So this is back in the day, back in 2016. This was, this was one of my first just little weird experiments with CSS Grid. And so this is what it looked like back then in in Nightly and in Canary, and then this was what it looked like everywhere else. So I hadn't put any thought into what is this actually going to look like in these other browsers. There are today some big websites using CSS Grid. This is The Guardian. This is what it looks like in a, a browser that doesn't support CSS Grid. This is The Financial Times. Again, using CSS Grid in this very simple, very basic way, not really using it for everything, not really using it for as much as it could do. And then here we have the FT in Internet Explorer. You can see it still looks pretty decent, still looks pretty good, but it is a different layout. It's a simpler layout. It does mean that their sidebar is now kind of further down the page, looking a little bit odd, but it's still kind of fine. And I, I think if you're taking these two approaches, these two different approaches of make the website look exactly the same and kind of just make do with the best you can do for Internet Explorer, I think this is only the, the, the only approach that's really worth taking. Because otherwise, what you're doing, you're recreating the exact same layout in two different ways. And I think a lot of us are just so excited about using CSS Grid that we're like, yeah, let's just use it. And then 
when we have to deal with managers, when we have to deal with product owners, when we have to deal with QA, then we're like, oh, OK, we will make it look exactly the same. And you're actually just sending people more code, more CSS. And you're actually, in a way, making things more complicated. The whole reason we want to use CSS Grid, partly it's so we can do more exciting layouts, more experimental layouts, more artfully directed layouts. But partly it's just because it makes our life easier. As soon as you're writing two layouts to achieve the exact same thing, you're kind of losing all the benefit. So I think the reality is that we are just going to have to make do. Um, so here is a third example of a relatively large site. This is Stripe. Most of their um, customers are developers. Um, and so they can be probably a bit more, make assumptions about what browsers people are using. I'm sure their analytics show, I'm sure, very few developers <laughs> using an Explorer. Um, if you're a developer who chooses that browser out of choice, uh, then I, I don't even know what to say to that. But, um, Firefox has undoubtedly what's becoming the best tooling for doing layout stuff. And this will actually show you every single use of Grid on a web page. So this is Stripe. You can see they've really gone to town. They're using it all over the place to do what is really a quite interesting layout. I, I've got to say, I think it's one of the best designed websites I've, I've really come across. I think they've done a really good job. Um, but unfortunately, you know, this is what it looks like on Internet Explorer, which, yeah, it's, it's not great. It's not readable. It's not legible. It's not even usable. Um, so these are the stats as they are right now. It's gone from being almost what seemed like the only browser to a tiny 3%, somewhat depressingly, Edge actually is still used by fewer people <laughs> than Internet Explorer. Um, hopefully, we will see this drop down further. But um, every single one of these people on um, recent versions of, of Windows do actually have the, uh, the option to open Edge whenever they want to. So I think we're just talking about very stubborn people that are just like, oh my god, please just open Edge. Depending on what your clientele is, you can just make this decision. This is GitHub. This is as of uh, July, this July. They're going to completely stop supporting Internet Explorer. Um, so that's, that's one choice. But um, another way of doing things, if you're a content-driven site, some of us are making very complicated web apps. Some of us are making Google Maps, something very, very JavaScript heavy. If you're a content-driven site where you've got a bunch of HTML, you can take this approach. This is the Guardian in Internet Explorer 8. This is nature.com in Internet Explorer 9. We're talking about people that, to avoid that sort of Stripe issue where you just have something completely illegible, something completely and utterly unusable, instead you just strip out the CSS and you're left with pure HTML. It doesn't look amazing, but it will work. And I think going forward, as we see a further drop off of Internet Explorer users, this will become an increasingly viable way to deal with old browsers. So this is just using a re relatively complicated media query. Um, I'm not going to explain what all that stuff actually means, because it's kind of irrelevant. This is basically a hack. Um, this will make your CSS appear absolutely everywhere except Internet Explorer and old browsers. Because we're not just talking about CSS Grid when we talk about Internet Explorer. This is actually a comparison of Internet Explorer 11 and the latest version of Chrome. And if I zoomed in really, really closely, you would see that this is actually a list of every single feature that Internet Explorer 11 doesn't support, um, that Chrome does support. And it's an ever-growing list, because in Internet Explorer right now, it's security updates only, right? So every single time I see discussion on the internet about, oh, there's a new feature, everyone's excited about it, there's always some guy that's like, oh, can you use it in Internet Explorer, to which the answer, like forevermore, is no. You definitely can't. Um, and so, 
I'm sure we're all doing cross-browser testing, a whole lot of it. This is kind of where I spend a lot of my life, just in browser stack, opening various browsers, getting my own mobile phone out, which has got like oh, seven different browsers on it. Um, because it's kind of easy to run into a browser bug. This is actually the working group, the CSS working group of uh, the W3C. So they're the people that actually make the standards. They actually kind of know what they're doing better than anyone. And yet, this is their website in Safari. And so this is why it can be such, um, such a good idea to actually use this technique called cutting the mustard, which is a technique really developed by the BBC a fair few years ago, which you can update to just cut out Internet Explorer completely. Because if you're not actively checking every single old browser out there, the chances are you are going to run into stuff like this and not even know it. And you're going to have unreadable content, illegible content, and unusable content. But I'm sure most of us probably aren't really there yet, where we can just, just say, you know what, you get some plain HTML if you're in an explorer. Um, so this is, this is nature.com. This is nature.com in, in the Explorer. And right now, you're probably thinking, why even bother? If you can do a layout with, um, with Flexbox, do it with Flexbox. And I think when talking about how do you progressively enhance a layout, how do you progressively enhance the CSS grid, if you're trying to achieve the, the exact same layout, there's really that, not that much point. So this is CSS. Um, without CSS grid, this is Flexbox layout in Internet Explorer. Um, and you can kind of tell why we actually needed CSS grid, right? Because this is the kind of thing that was harder to deal with, to actually have these consistent columns. So in the last talk, you heard a little bit about at supports. I think the really frustrating thing about at supports is you do actually have to define your fullback layout first, which is, is more counterintuitive, really, than I'd like it to be. So we've got the margin for Internet Explorer. We've got some styling for Internet Explorer, some maximum widths for the different columns. And then you have to actually just take all of those things away and remove them. Um, so it's, it's not the, the uh, nicest code in the world. <laughs> uh, kind of desperate to just take it out of there. Um, but it can be done if you're happy with something that isn't quite 100% exactly the same. And we're not just using CSS Grid as some kind of developer convenience um, just to make our lives easier. We're talking about actually less code, sending less code to people's browsers, actually in, in, increase per, uh, increasing performance, improving performance. And yeah, making our, as well as making ourselves, um, making our lives a whole lot easier. Um, so these are some refactorings that I've done relatively recently. We did actually have some layout done in Kotlin, which I'm sure is relatively unusual uh, and was a little crazy, um, as well as just JavaScript for doing layout, which really obviously should be CSS's job. But there is still now, even though um, Grid has shipped in, in most browsers, there's still a whole bunch of very useful features we're still waiting for. Um, so obviously, in HTML, some stuff has to be nested, as we know. I think the most obvious example of that is the form element, right? So you can't have a label. You can't have an input without a form. And with CSS Grid, that actually kind of matters, because it's only direct children of a grid that are actually going to be laid out in your grid. And so this is where um, display contents will come in really, really handy. So this is a sort of slightly technical explanation from the actual spec. Um, probably slightly easier just to show a visual representation of what that actually means. So here is a rather contrived layout, a very simple two-column grid. Um, and you can see the whole form is actually just inside of one single grid cell. And however much stuff I put in the form, it's all going to be in a single cell. And as soon as you put display contents onto, onto the form, 
then things will be laid out into the two columns. Um, so that will make Grid a lot, lot, lot easier to work with um, for a lot of um, edge cases that you'll run into. That is actually already has reasonable support. I think we're just waiting on Edge at this point, um, but it's supported everywhere else. And this is the kind of thing that I hope going forward, subgrids will help us deal with. So subgrid, I haven't been able to play around with it because it's not actually supported in any single browser in the whole world yet. Um, but you can see there's actually kind of two, two grids here almost. You've got the cards themselves in a grid, but then the actual insides of the cards are also equal to one another. And that's something that at the moment, unless you use um, specific heights and you actually just say, this is going to be this many pixels high, um, you can't really get that effect. And that obviously means you've got the potential for truncating content, for content being completely um, cut through, um, generally something avo to avoid. Um, so subgrid is really going to help us with that, hopefully, once it's implemented. Um, it's not all completely panned out yet in the spec, but achieving this sort of layout should be as easy as display subgrid. So all the examples that we've actually seen of these big sort of production websites using grid have been very, very simple. Um, put a sidebar to the side, simple layouts, um, which is a shame because I think Grid is such an intuitive and useful way to set out layout. Um, the first time I actually started reading about Grid and thinking about Grid, everything was saying like, oh, you use Grid for things that are in two directions, right? Um, and then you use Flexbox if it only goes in one direction. And actually, Grid is so powerful that a lot of the time it's more, um, it's actually superior to Flexbox even for the, these one dimensional layouts. And so we could use kind of Grid throughout like our whole website, um, but we're probably not really there yet. If you do want to learn more about progressive enhancement and dealing with Internet Explorer, I do have a whole article about that. Um, and thanks. <laughs>